Now, the White House says it's eliminated 22 regulations for every one that it's created. Here to discuss David Bonson, uh, CIO of Bonson Group of Hightower, author of Crisis of Responsibility and a National Review contributor, and John Burnett, New York GOP strategic advisor and founder and CEO of One Empire Group. Hey, David, let me start with you. Uh, you know, as much as we talked about taxes this year and, and sort of positive rhetoric toward the uh, profits and business, the, the cutting of regulations has been so enormous, and it's almost been a stealthy sort of move, but it's had a major impact on the economy already, hasn't it? It sure has, and it should have been predictable, because business owners have been saying this forever, Charles, if they could have their pick of all the different things that could be done to benefit their business, there's nothing that would have benefited them more than easing the regulatory burden. And that's exactly what they've done since the beginning of 2017, right out of the gate, even when there were other troubles and there were the Obamacare repeal kind of stalled and so forth. The fact of the matter is that the executive branch level, they began deregulating right away. The market discounted it, and, and it's been a tremendous boon to the real economy and the market. You know, uh, just so folks understand, the Federal Registry closed out with 3,281 uh, 3, final rules. These are the final rules. That's the lowest count since records have been kept going back to the mid-1970s. I mean, that is such a relief off not just the burden on existing businesses, but now you sort of create a pathway, John, for new folks, uh, new businesses to get started. Absolutely. You know, this president understands that we cannot regulate our way to economic growth. We tried that for the past eight years, and we didn't reach 3% growth. The president is not against regulation, but he is for smart regulation. He understands what businesses need. They need taxes reduced, and they need a deregulatory market. You know, in the aftermath uh, of the uh, market crashing the last time around and the onset of the Great Recession, though, David, uh, even Alan Greenspan said, Maybe it was a mistake to think that businesses could ultimately or would ultimately regulate themselves. It was always thought that, hey, there's, you know, a certain self-preservation that would, you know, businesses wouldn't do everything stupid. They wouldn't put it all on the line. They wouldn't touch the third rail, you know, if, if left to their own devices. And <laughs> so the pendulum swung so far. President uh, Obama was elected to add regulations and to put these speed bumps in the way of businesses. So can businesses self-regulate? Well, it's interesting that it was Chairman Greenspan who said that right after creating one of the most reckless monetary environments <laughs> in human history that served as sort of kindling for the financial crisis. But the reality is, is that their response to uh, the recklessness of the financial crisis, which is the subject of my book that you mentioned, Crisis of Responsibility, was regulation. Not smart regulation, not effective regulation. All the big banks that they demonize so much are way bigger than they were before. What they did is dumb regulation for the sake of saying that they regulated something. The, as he said a moment ago, what President Trump is advocating and what I think his executive branch is doing is smarter form of regulation. We certainly need governance. Right. We need bandwidth that companies right. work within. But you cannot take away the incentive to grow. You have got to provide companies clarity and fundamentally the idea that light regulation creates a, a bad environment does not stand right. up to the testimony of history. Uh, pretty soon uh, they're going to unwind some of Dodd-Frank. I think uh, the 36 too big to fail banks would just be six. Uh, and that might be the real test. But I think it's also going to be fantastic for Main Street because these banks not having to hold so much excess capital will be able to lend money. Absolutely. One of the biggest challenges over the last eight years is access to capital for small businesses. So if you actually free up uh, regulation, I should say deregulation and free up capital, that starts a new economic engine. And we've seen a vast increase in the market over the last year, right? Because the market anticipated everything being, de not everything, but the, with the president keeping his promise in terms of deregulation as well as tax cuts. Right. That's accomplished in year one. Right. But he's not, like you said, he's not done yet. He, we still have three years to go when we uh, attack Dodd-Frank attack other things in terms of uh, the infrastructure bill passes. He's already deregulated in terms of uh, the hoops and hurdles that state uh, legislators and, and other businesses have to go through right. to, to, to actually break ground. He's, he's removing all these obstacles. So we don't have to wait 10 years to get a project off, the, off of the uh, uh, blueprint and into reality. Right. He, he's okay. moving into his sweet spot. All right, guys. Well, <laughs> I got to tell you, 22 to 1 is a ratio. President Trump didn't promise it. But he's delivered that. Gentlemen, thank you both very much.
Uh, and uh, if I don't see you, have a great New Year.